This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in once again to the Pete and Sebastian Show. I'm uh, Sebastian Maniscalco on the other end, Pete Corielli. Um, man, I don't know if I should ask you about the audition. That's okay. That's up in limbo. I did it. It went good. It was a very interesting day. It was uh, the guy. I ha- First of all, the guy can't be any cooler. He can't be any cooler. And I know he's trying to help me get be the guy. And he, you know, so when I, we, we, he rented a room for us, like an actor's room, you know, like where there's people rehearsing all over for other stuff. Me and Rappaport. <clears throat> and we went in there and we went over the scenes and like we got into it where he's like, in, in one scene, <clears throat> my character knocks on the door and when she opens it up, it's a big deal, you know? So... I like put my hands on the door frame and he's like, yeah, try doing that. And like, we literally went to the door, you know, we're using the door. I'm like, this guy's an actor, shit, you know? And uh, he worked with me a lot, bro. I wish I was fucking Earl Flynn, but I'm not, bro. But I'm not, you know? Um, it went really good. Yeah. Work with you. Guy. Okay. Let's start putting you on another level here, man. I mean, you're, you're selling yourself short. You should be coming in there going, it's a formality, right? That's, listen, I mean, this, I, to, I felt it's a good comedy. It. It's not like you're, it's not like you're playing Abe Lincoln. You when know, I say a, we're, I know you're right. You're right. And, and when talking with you last week helped a lot too, but what he was saying, when I say work with me, I mean, he, he just meant read, just keep reading it. You know, going through it, seeing how it feels together, the scenes. That's all. You know what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. saying he was going. He was going. You need to do this or that. He wasn't. He was just couldn't uh, have been I, cool. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I miss. Was, yeah. I thought he, okay, I thought he was telling you. Oh, wait, what's your, what, where were you before this? What's your motivation? Oh no 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 no. He, uh, the only thing he'd say is stuff like. Uh, you you on the cast? When I see you, that's Bobby. That's Bobby. Yeah, so the, that's so the what I'm you, saying. Yeah, you're, just he's like Pete. A, you're Pete, right. but you're Bobby. And he, and he goes, don't even worry about the lines. It doesn't matter if you remember him. You fucking wrote him. So even if you don't say it, who's going to get mad that you're not saying the right line? You know, so he, it was just all about loosening me up to, to that aspect. It wasn't like uh, other stuff. And then after the, after the read together, we went, we got some coffee. We talked more about all the stuff. And then I got in my car. And I was about to shoot over to meet my friends off a fishing trip. And I checked my email and the casting director had just sent a slew of bobbies on tape. So before I went driving, I had to sit in my car in Manhattan with the air conditioner on going through the bobbies going, are these guys beating me? I bet, you know, and, uh, I got to be honest, each one that went through, I'm like, all right, that's not Bobby. That's not Bobby. That's not Bobby, you know? <clears throat> um, and then, but the way we left it was Mike was like, bro, you're, you're Bobby. I mean, you are Bobby. Uh, let me, let, uh, I'm going to talk to Oza, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm telling you. So, and then even when he left at the very end, he goes, take it easy, Bobby. <gasps> so is it, am I Bobby or am I not Bobby? So then I'm fishing all week. I don't know if I'm Bobby. I don't know. We'll see. You should, call him or, you should call him and go, I'll see you on set. <laughs> I know, I know. But now, because we're filming in Canada, and it's not a high-budgeted show, you know, so some of these actors might have to, we might have to go Canadian. And I'm, I'm wondering if we're going to have to get a Canadian Bobby. <laughs> we'll see. But then, and the last thing I'll say about it, bro, is... um. Oh, two things I want to say. One, talking to you on the cast really helped, man. Appreciate you being like the way you are. But then um, today we had a meeting, everyone, because it's getting ready to film time. And we're working with a company in Canada. And one of the guys from Canada goes, I'm sorry, I'm all new to this. So who's who's the showrunner, though? And me and the other guy, the other writer, his name is Pete. And then the producer's like, well, the two Petes, they're the showrunners. And bro, just hearing out that, hearing that out loud. And then, you know, I go to rap. I'm like, I know you're the director and, and uh, star, so obviously whatever you say is less. He goes, no, but listen, I need you guys there. I need you to be a part of this every day with the filming. 
I don't know if I have time to be Bobby, bro. I'm show running a show. And people are reading these scripts that we didn't think would be, we didn't even ask to do because we, they wouldn't do them. And they're coming back, uh, you know, high name actors and actresses going, I, I want in on this. So I don't know who's going to end up doing what. It's getting very exciting, though. Oh. If we can find all the money. <laughs> we get, get the time to do Bobby. I don't even know if you got time to show run this thing. Well, well why? Why? <laughs> oh, because I should be Bobby? No. Because we're doing the cast. Oh, bro, the cast comes over everything. That's on her. <laughs> That's, that, that goes without saying. I got, a, I got a, a reoccurring bit here, which is not typical on my end. What's uh, but, but By the way, do we have anything else on the... Uh, I don't want to sh sell your st uh, story. Sure, no, no, we we're about... It. That's where we're at right now. That's where we're okay, at Okay, right so now. we're just waiting on a call for you to go get fitted for Bobby. <laughs> that, that's, you know... But if right? not, bro, if not... Like I said, I'm still show running this thing and I'm more than ecstatic. So I don't want there to be a, a little mini funeral going on on the cast if I'm not buying Nah, it. nah, nah, bro. The way this is going, this sounds like you might be the next Seinfeld. Writing, acting. Next thing you know, you're a producer. You, come on. Uh, no, this is Bobby does not have a, a big elite part, but uh, you know, between the cast, if I could get a little acting and then the resume is complete, jack of all <laughs> trades, master of none. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but no, this yeah. is this is this is everything, baby. So, what's up on your end? Where are we going? What are we talking about? Well, well, I, I think I should just start with this because I got to get it off my chest, and, and this is again becoming. <clears throat> possibly a regular bit i'm going to entitle this and i don't know if dj lou could give me a an introduction here or some maybe like a little music or something i call this segment texts from my mother oh i love it i love it man <laughs> so my mom is an avid listener of the cash she listens to it when she takes her two mile walk every morning right beautiful Beautiful. So I get this text from her uh, last week on a Thursday at 10.30 a.m. I'm just going to gonna read it to you. All right. Listen to the cast. You know where I'm going. By the way, I, I, I read this kind of in the tone of how I know my mother's talking. Right? Right. I don't even know where this is going. This is in caps lock. Enough with the chocolate, wine, and the CBD. <laughs> right? Uh, She's upset with the pot use in the right. chocolates. Right? Okay. <clears throat> What's next? No wonder you're always tired. Wow. Seriously. This is great. This is great. This is great. Seriously. Enough with the experimentation. You're never too old for addiction. Didn't I hear it from you guys when I used to smoke? You used to smoke cigarettes. We used to break right. the balls on that, right? Yeah. I know what you're saying. Relax. I only do a little. Well, a little becomes a lot. Wow. Bro. Wow. <laughs> Just saying. After almost 50 years of nothing, now? Save it for when you retire and don't have to perform. I'm sorry. I just worry about you guys. It's the Italian mother thing. Okay, I'm done. Delete. <laughs> Bro. Unbelievable, man. Bro, I, 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 did, I did three or four <clears throat> chocolates over the last two months. Right. My mom thinks I'm shooting up heroin next week. Well, Bro, I'm, I'm not even absorbing this the way I should be. Because if your mom listens to the cast, she knows what I do. I ate next to this woman on Easter Sunday. She probably thought she was sitting next to an, a, a drug addict, a full-blown <laughs> drug addict. <laughs> yeah. 
I wouldn't be surprised if it changed the end of that text. And what it really said is a little leads to Pete. <laughs> <laughs> right? But did you just change it to a lot for both of us? I mean, wow. That's good. That's making me quick, guy. It's not even my mom. Well, I, I read the I read the text. I threw out my chocolates. But this is so old school because nothing with the fact that you knock back wine at a, 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 a yeah above average pace to put it lightly. We discussed the wine cellar in the house, but you have one chocolate, and the next thing you know, she thinks you're uh, popping a needle in a park. <laughs> so. <clears throat> And I, I call, and then I got on the phone with her. This right. was like uh, maybe two days after this text came in, and, and we talked it out. <laughs> I said, "What do you?" I said, "Enough, enough with this." I go, "I, I do it every once in a while," and she's like, yeah. "You know," I go, "You're cracking open a, a, a bottle of wine over there every day at three thirty in the afternoon." That's what right? I'm saying. That's what. I'm, does your mom listen? She listens. She don't. She don't watch. Right. She listens. I don't know. I don't think she watches. She don't, all right, good. I don't, I don't want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the double standard, guy. <laughs> Knock him back. My mom, the same thing. She drinks wine at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, like, religiously, man. You know, like yeah. the male. And, uh... And I'm doing one hits on a holiday up in her house, you know, because I can't, you know, be be known doing that. It's unbelievable. It's, that's, that's how they raise, bro. That's how they raise. It's like, it's like kids, our kids aren't going to think it's weird when they get older and they take their kids to the park and there's a section of people doing heroin. Because that's how they're, <laughs> seriously, that's how they're growing up. It's very bizarre to us, but by then it'll be like, no, that's the heroin slide. We, we use this slide. That one's for the heroin people. <sighs> oh, God. Yeah. So, so what, it, what, what was the compromise? I mean, you, you, you going cold turkey for mom? Man, listen, bro, I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not, even, I'm not even doing it. I haven't done uh, the chocolates in two weeks. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I gotta tell you, this weekend was a, was a. Whew, man, you I, did I, use the word experimenting, though. That's what made everybody a little. Uh... Experimenting with the chocolate. I'm not experimenting with drugs in general. It, was, it sounded, and I know your mom's concerned. The last show, it sounded like you were trying to find the nice pot buzz that you could eat to get you through the day, um, and you know that sounds like. Yeah, you know, I just want, I just want, yeah. wanted to experiment to see if there was any change in mood uh, with the pot. Uh, and to, to, to be honest with you, I didn't feel like it was that different. It was a little. It's it, not. I was laughing last night, bro. What are you, what are you spraying? Kid came upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I hear her. <laughs> So what is she smelling? Pot and lemons? <laughs> Hopefully just lemons. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, do you got that spray that the that, that isn't that spray that you were using last week? Uh, I just yeah, yeah spray that when you were talking. No, no, guy, are you, this is liquid gold. This is for the skin, not for the air. Are you crazy? <laughs> so what were you about to say about? Uh, you go yesterday. You go yesterday. Oh, and I cut. Ah, oh, no, this weekend, yeah. man, it was. Uh, uh. I started a tradition. I, I only did one of these, but I'm going to try and start this tradition. Uh, and I'm calling it uh, the Saturday Supper Series. I invited, on a whim, Saturday night, 12 people to the house, and I said, come by, I'm making dinner. Right now, I've never cooked for 12 people, all right? So I figured I was going to make steak, potatoes, and some smashed broccoli. All right? All right. Now, I have to say I'm really good with making steak, but I'm only good with about four people. Once you start adding more than four, it gets a little dicey. You're grilling the to... steak? No, I'm actually putting it in the oven. I do my technique. The uh... right. Actually, I'm going to put the technique up on Patreon. I know, oh, you baby. I'm going to put the technique up on Patreon, oh, all right. and it, it tells you how to cook the perfect steak. And what I do at 275, I put the steak in for about 45 to 50 minutes, only salt and pepper, right? 
Then I leave it sit for 15 minutes, and then I sear it on each side for two minutes in a scalding hot cast iron skillet. All right? Wow. Wow. Cut and cut and serve. Wow. It, 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 if you do this right, it's going to be the best steak you've ever had. Also, you got to get a good cut of meat. And I tend to get my meat uh, <clears throat> from a place called Flannery Beef. All right? It's in wow. Central California. It's the best beef I've ever had in regards to just making a steak at home. I mean, you could they, go to Whole they Foods. Mail it. They mail it like yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they ship it, yeah. Flannery steaks. And let me ask you this. There's, you're, you're saying no marinating this steak whatsoever, just salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. That's it. And no that's butter, a rub? Is no that a oil. rub? You rub that in? Sprinkle. No rub. Just sprinkle, pepper, flip it over, wow. sprinkle, pepper. Extremely simple preparation. But the end result, I have to say, is, is excellent. So I had these people coming over. And, uh, you know, when, you, when you're cooking, you, you're yeah. not really present with the people that you're with. You're, in, you're buried in the kitchen. But the key here for me was the prep. And I prepped it pretty well. I had a bail on the smashed broccoli because, and another thing for the listeners out there, and, and those of you who cook on a regular basis know this, but if you're cooking and you cook every once in a while, you start to see what you don't have in regards to cookware in the kitchen. And I'm lacking in like pots. So I didn't have enough pots to make the broccoli. I had I had enough to, to make, you know, one batch, but not the amount that I needed. Yeah, well, I mean, normally you're not cooking for 12, so you're probably yeah. never going to. Now, what exactly? I know you didn't go with it. What is a smash broccoli? What is what is how is that? What does that mean? <clears throat> so uh, you're supposed to, like, boil it and, the, and then put it in a, a food processor uh, with a little oil and a little garlic. And it's like broccoli. It's almost like a, a mashed potato, but oh, broccoli. Right? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I never even heard of that. This is. Uh... Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So we just ordered it. Uh, and I, I and I told the people that, that were there, I ordered it. I didn't play it off like I, I did it. But anyway, um, it was probably one of the best nights I've had all year in regards to the group of people that came over. And I hit uh, I hit the wine pretty good that night. Uh, Lana and I we we downed uh, a good good portion of wine. Nice. I had to get up nice. the next morning, which was yesterday morning. And what's your take on this? Nine thirty birthday for for a four year old. Nine thirty in the morning for a four year old. For a four year old. <clears throat> well, do you guys go to the kind of birthdays where the parents stick around, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, now, where I live, 930, I'd be like, this is beautiful. I, I can drop the kid <laughs> off, work out, mow the lawn, and then pick him yeah. up. I still got the day. You yeah, know? yeah, we're not but, there yet. We're not there yet. So you're still sticking around. Well, what do you mean, not there yet? I never stayed for my kid, ever, even when they were like two, gone. Well, bro, I don't know where you're living. You, you drop a three or off alone in L.A., you might as well call 911. Well, like, it's a, kid, it's we, a kidnapping. When she was three years old, though, she'd go to, like, a uh, party at a bounce house they have in town, right? So you go to the bounce house, you walk her in, you go to the corner where the parents are, the two parents whose kid it is, having the yeah. party. Hey, guys. We know them almost always. How's it going? Good, good. Do you want us to stick with No, no, no. Come back. It ends at three. We're going to da 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 And that's, yeah, that's always been how it is. So, you know, no, it, so yeah, I thought you normal, stuck around because the parties you go to got, you know, livestock and shit. <laughs> I'd stick around too if I was going to those kind of parties. They don't got any where I am. So what was nine thirty party because they could the party cause they could, uh, only time they could get Kanye? Who was at this one? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> they rented out an aquarium. Did they really? Man. That's yeah. what I'm. That's what I'm no. saying. Did they really? No, the the aquarium they rented out. It sounded like it was the Shed Aquarium in Chicago. No, I, didn't, I didn't even know L.A. had an aquarium in Santa Monica. Did you? No, but you know what I like more about aquariums as I get older than I do about zoos? The, the fish don't look sad in the aquarium, right? They don't look like they don't want to be there. They look happy. They look fine. Fucking zoo. You ever see the, the, the gorillas looking at you like, get the key. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. 
what? fish look like that, bro. They look sad? Yeah. You think you could tell a sad fish? I'll tell you how. I'm gonna do a shark feed. They got they had sharks there, right? But right. bro, I, 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 the aquarium was like a fish store. That that's what I'm talking here. It's it's like it was like uh. a glorified fish store. You know when you go to a fish store and they got the the fish tanks and shit. This is what yeah. this is what this was. And they had right. one big tank in the middle yeah. of the thing. But you know it it, it wasn't like. You know, you you looked and Shamu was flying by. It, right. This was they didn't have that, this, that glass tunnel where the fish are over no, your head. No tunnel. No, no, bro, no. It, this looked like an aquarium that lost their funding. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, it was nice people. Whatever. Just the, I'm looking at the shark feeding, and they yeah. got these sharks. I'd say in a, uh, I don't know, a six foot by five foot like five foot like pool oh, and they said they, they said they were going to do the shark feeding and these are like mini sharks about, right. about this big about i don't know maybe two feet i've never seen this before the shark's head came out of the water and the shark's head was out of the water as it was swimming <laughs> holy it was shit look like it was starving <laughs> i've never seen a fish Come out of the water looking for food. Well, most fish don't live in buckets. What the fuck? That's not even natural for the fish. This fish had to adapt its behavior to get food to fit its environment, right? It's like that's like what a seal does. <laughs> that's, that's, oh, that's shit, insane, bro. A shark are, was was levitating over the water because he was like, "Where is the food? I gotta eat." Uh, right, right. And, oh, and I was god. like, "Oh my god!" Now. My take on it, on having a, a birthday party in an aquarium, right? It's a yeah. four year old. Right. Me personally, you take you take your, you take your family to the aquarium. You don't you don't you don't bring thirty five kids there. They're nothing to do. Well, was there like a side room where I mean, because we you know you look at the fish, then we're gonna go over here and play. Uh, Pin the tail on the donkey, have cake. Pin the tail on the donkey. You're lucky they had running water in these tanks, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. So, I mean, come on. A fish is going to entertain a kid for nine minutes, maybe. Yeah, that's what right? I'm saying. Like, how long could you right. look at a fish? It does, it's got the eyeballs, it swims by, it got the mouth open. Next, you know. Then we touch it, then we touch it, maybe, right? Stick, touch it? Know. Is it? It's in an aquarium. It's, it, it's in glass. Like this, do you have a. <sighs> The sand ones where you just stick your hand in there and the, and the sea things come by and you get to touch their back when they swim by. Nothing like you're that. You're talking about, no, you're talking about an aquarium that's funded by Bill right, Gates. Right, this right, is right. an aquarium this. that if I went there today, it'd yeah. probably be a, a body shop. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> how this, this, thing was, this thing was on its way out. So uh, <laughs> this party should have wrapped by like 10, 15, guy. This is what I'm here. Right. <laughs> so, and there's another thing. And this is about, you know, again, I like to go to parties. I like to have parties. Right, right, right. If you're having a party out, it's it was like half inside, half outside. The food station was, had bagels and locks, right? And the locks is in the sun. You ever you ever go to a, a party and the and the table, the food is sweating? Yeah, the, the fruit. Yeah. The, you don't put salmon in the sun. Right? Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> that's that's oh, got to be in shade on ice shit, man. You put that stuff in the sun, it's over. It's salmonella. It's it's kind of weird even eating salmon at an aquarium. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Are we going to barbecue at a zoo? What the? F this is like a uh, yeah, very heavy fish. Is the kid like into fish or something? <laughs> I don't know. But then, uh, but then there was also a Spider-Man theme. Like there was Spider-Man all over the place. So I was confused. I walked in. I thought this was fish theme. I walked out. There's right, Spider-Man right, right. posters all over the wall. And there's spiders think? on the cake. 
Do you think a fish could see the salmon, the lox, and, and know that's the remnants of another fish? <laughs> that, that's impossible, you think, right? Do you think he's looking through the, the aquarium going, holy shit, the- they're going to get us next? <laughs> no, right? Listen, we should probably stop complaining that we got to bob our heads for food from the kids. We could be on that fucking bagel. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, oh, man. God. So uh, after that, bro, and I got to get your take on this. And I don't know if you've ever done this before, but um, we went to uh, Monster Jam. Is that like the truck thing? Yeah. Right. No, my I've question, never been to My question to you is, why trash? Big time. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, dying, I'm dying to hear, is there a, a non-white trash section that you were in? <laughs> <laughs> because you don't even have clothes for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you need like a constant t-shirt, something ripped? Would you to, I walk but, us through this? It, it, uh, let me tell you the, the I got out of the car and the guy next to me got out of the car, right? Yeah, yeah. And his t shirt says I polish my AR fifteen with liberal tears. <laughs> So, oh man, I that is uh, <laughs> all right. Maybe. That's what I that's what I see right out of the gate, bro. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh man. And so we we go in now. <clears throat> Lana took the kids last year when I was on the road. Kids loved it. So this year when it came around, she's like, you know, they, you know, they want to go again. I said, all right, we'll, we'll go. It's downtown at the uh, crypto arena. So we go in. And uh, we get our seats, and you know, I was quite surprised. I, 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 the crowd was civilized. You know, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't what I right. thought it was going to be. Right. Well, not hold that thought because I want to. Yeah. This is what you thought it would be. Because I'm going to forget this little quick side story. My brother went to NASCAR last week, and he goes on the phone to me. He goes, "Bro, I'm sitting in my seats." My son and my friend's son is right in front of me, and, I, and my, my brother's with his wife. And he goes, uh, and right next to us are these two big dudes drinking beers, big beards. And he goes, and they're chain smoking Winston cigarettes, right? Blowing it all. He goes, it's literally blowing on my boy's head, right? And he goes, and the other kid's dad, he's over there with my other kid. So it's not like we just But anyway, my brother goes, and these dudes, like, you know, they're NASCAR dudes. He goes, I lean over to my son, and I go, listen... We either move right now uh, to further back or you guys deal with it and don't say anything because I'm not saying nothing to these guys because they will kick the shit out of me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to move, move now. So you're, you're telling me it was uh, not so much that that uh, well, hardcore. I mean, that T-shirt was hardcore. Well, the T-shirt was hardcore, but that group that that guy was with, yeah, they all had red beards down to their chest you know right. where the beard right. the beard is on the t-shirt yeah and uh oh yeah settled nice right on the t-shirt yeah just just and, and I, these guys were smoke you ever, you ever around smokers and, and i'm very sensitive to smoke but you ever around smokers who are smoking a cigarette where you're like what brand is that because it's burning <laughs> my lungs <laughs> Like, if I, I'm having this effect and I'm just getting secondhand, what do your lungs look like? <clears throat> That's, there is, I can tell, cheap, cheap cigarette smoke, man. And now cigarettes are so expensive that so many people buy the knockoff brands and those things like, like basics, they think they're called and stuff, and they just don't smell good. Uh, like, an, an American spirit. It's still not, I can deal with the smell of that. But yeah, overall, man, like I was with my buddy this weekend. He smokes and it was his truck. And when he would light up, I mean, you're like, wow. I used to do that to people. Holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so there was was an element there, but it was pretty much families and, and, and what have you. So now we get our seats 
And I go, all right, I'm going to go get some food because we were starving. <clears throat> so I'm in line. Can of Sprite. How much at the at the stadium? What, what would you say a can of Sprite? Normal can, 12 ounces. Well, I went to that game. I, all right, I guess now it's got to be up to like what? Nine bucks? Eight twenty nine. Eight twenty nine. Eight dollars and twenty nine cents. Can you believe it? Now, dude, it's going to the point where, like, you know, when you, you when you go to use pesos or something, when you, first time you're ever in Mexico, you go to get a Snickers bar and they're like twenty five thousand pesos, and you're like, Jesus Christ, I can't afford the Snickers bar, and then you realize. You have ninety five thousand dollars on you in, in pesos, you know. Yeah. So I was shocked. I was actually yeah. shocked with the prices there. So I bring back the food, and now everybody's got headsets on. And, and Lana said, "Gets loud, so you got to put you know these like earmuffs on the kids." Like, loud. bro, this truck came out. I didn't have the headset on. I think I lost hearing in my right ear. This shit is so loud in there. And then on top of that, I'm smelling gas fumes the whole time, right? Because these things are like, you know, they're shooting off gas and we're indoors. I'm thinking, thinking, is this safe? (laughs) Isn't this like mass suicide? (laughs) Right? We we got it, right? (laughs) We got trucks on indoors. (laughs) They're like, the show's got to wrap by 11 or else we're all going to start falling asleep. It's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> You're right, man. I mean, I my, my sister said she went once and it was real gassy, but I thought, well, you all might have been outdoors, but you said arena. No, nah, huh? this was inside. Oh, man. So Did, he, did you what? get a headache from it? Yeah, I started getting nauseous just from smelling all this stuff. Man. And then there's another thing. They're doing these, like, donuts and, you know, spinning out. And there's dirt flying up into the stands, bro. I'm getting hit with shrapnel in, 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 the, in the seats. And my kids, you know, Serafina had to watch the show like this because of the dirt flying up. And I go, is this fun? I mean, like, <laughs> right. what are we doing here? The were were love- there people loving that when the dirt was hitting them? Like, yeah. Like, people behind me. We're going, you know, they were going, uh, they were trying to figure out what the score was because they do these tricks with the cars or the trucks and then they rate them. The guy behind me was, he acted like he was watching, uh, you know, the Yankees versus the Mets in the World Series and he was analyzing the game. I go, guy, this is, (laughs) this is dirt bikes. (laughs) Right, but, and someone's but, judging, <laughs> judging their like, like a figure skater. They go out and do crazy moves, yeah. and then they get yeah. a score. Yeah, and oh this guy's, this guy's going. Well, he was up on two wheels for at least a, you know, six seconds. So that's at least a nine point two. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. so, isn't it crazy what people are into that you're not? It's like, <laughs> and you know that dirt hitting you. <clears throat> when you were a kid, you went to Sea World. I'm sure at some point with your family. I remember yeah. when the they would have the bleacher seats that said splash area, you know? Yeah. And my father wouldn't let us sit there. We went like twice. And he's like, I ain't sitting there. And I always and, and I was always like, this blows, man. I don't want to be a I get older, I realize why we didn't sit there. Cause we're not white trash. <laughs> my father doesn't walk around the rest of the day smelling like a fucking dolphin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And that's it. Oh, I mean, these people, like, they, I mean, if I said to my dad, let's sit up front and go to the monster truck, he goes, I'll throw dirt on your face in the backyard for free. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's exciting, though, for a kid, man. A no, kid must love loved that. It. Yeah. They loved it. Absolutely. Do those things shoot fire, too, right? No, they don't do fire there. Out of the, they out of the top, the, the pipe. No. A flame. You don't no? see no fire. No. Maybe they do that outside, but inside, I think oh, they, yeah, there's right. a. They're, there's a restriction on how much <laughs> right. fire is coming out of your car. Right. Uh, so we're sitting there, and I'm like, <clears throat> going to this thing with a hangover is a whole other game. Too. Oh, I'm my stuck. God. I, I got a hangover. Nine, so yeah. 9.30 Aquarium, 12 o'clock, I'm at the thing smelling gas fumes. So Lana oh. and I came out of there <clears> looking <throat> like somebody uh, 
slapped the shit out of us. And and, and we got into the car, <clears throat> and those guys are out there, the AR-15 guys. Right. Yeah. I don't even think they went into this thing. I think they just tailgated. My wife's got a problem with. She doesn't know how to do discreetly. <laughs> it's like when she like refers to somebody that she's talking about, right. she like motions to them where if the other person was observant and like dialed in, they would know that she's talking about them, right? <laughs> yeah. She was like, she was like, oh, these guys are smoking, you know, and, and made a face. I go, get, like, like your buddy, go, get in because I can't protect you or our family. <laughs> right, right. Okay. This is a different man and I don't have the skill sets or the strength to fight these guys off. This okay? guy, he's telling you he has a gun on his shirt. <laughs> right? I mean, and, you, and you're pointing at him. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, can you just make it a little bit more discreet? So, uh, yeah, we had, a, we had a great, great weekend. And, um, and yeah, it's just nice because the kids are going back to school next week. So, yeah, summer's winding down. I don't know. It came and went like that. But it's good to, that, 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 the kids are, uh, that the kids are going back to school because everybody else is in school. And my kids start school after Labor Day. So, for this weekend... Yeah, I'm doing the Saturday Supper series, and I'm doing, doing Italian, hand. Italian theme. So I'm gonna make pasta, not homemade because I think that's a, I never made homemade pasta before. All right. I think that's a big task to do for twelve people, right. and I'm going Thursday uh, and Friday. I'm 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 going to to perform, so I'm not gonna have a lot of prep time. But I'm liking this Saturday Supper, bro. It's my new Are passion. You, um uh, well, it used to be Sunday thing. It was a Sunday thing. Now it's sliding over to Saturday. Is it the same 12 people? Uh, I invited the same 12 people. Two of them can't come. So now I'm trying to substitute, you know. And, and again, why this worked so well is Lana and I really kind of looked at the group we were inviting and said, oh, you know, so-and-so will get along with so-and-so and this and that. And everybody really had a good back and forth. We all sat 12 of us around a table and had a conversation, which generally speaking, you got 12 people at your house. There's branch right. offs, you know, four are talking right. here, three are talking there, two. This was like very communal. And uh, I, was, I was actually surprised at the, the retention time that I, that I retained these people at the party because, you know, they came at 7, last one left at 1.30. You had a, it, you had a twelve-person table, full conversation, full no, conversation, no, no side ones. Right? No, and then and then you only see that in movies. You only and yeah. in, in movies. Well, I'm like, that's not even realistic. I yeah, do, I'm, this, I'm whispering to my wife about this not being realistic. I'm not even at the fucking point, right? But when I see it, I dig it, right? It's like you got twelve minds coming together, adding their thing, knowing when not to. Yeah, that's pretty. That's a that's a dynamic group, bro. You make a good point. Knowing when not to, boom. There's always somebody kind of overstepping, over talking somebody at, at at a party like that. We didn't have any of that. But here's a nice thing I do. Or not I do. I I I've actually learned here. I learned <clears throat> it when I went to go um, to this dinner party. This couple had us over, and they move from the table they ate at to another area in the house for cocktails, like an after-dinner drink. Right. You move out of that dinner table, and then you kind of relax in a more, like it was Open. a circle. I put circle uh, t uh, chairs around in a circle. And then we okay. had some branch-offs. But I got to tell you, it's going to be hard to replicate that this Saturday. I got to... I got to bring in some ringers that uh, that weren't there on uh, yeah. this past Saturday. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I went fishing with some friends, right? Uh, all my high school buddies, I mean my best buddies, uh, we went out to Long Island, stayed at my one friend's house who's a bachelor. Um, but he's got his own house, and uh, it, it was so much fun. But just a couple of little tidbits I wanted to bring up. The first one being 
I know my buddy, he's got a house, it's pretty far out east, and uh, I had a feeling that there'd probably be one bathroom we're all using. So I brought along, which I ended up needing as soon as I got out there. I went to the bathroom, right? Somebody, I must have been in like season seven of the cast. I was bringing up, I was in Florida, and I was telling you on the cast how I'd go leave the hotel and go down to this lobby area they had a bathroom because my my wife and daughter were like you're killing us in the hotel room and then this guy sent me this stuff that you spray in the toilet before you go it's like magic and this was the first time i took it on the road with me bro wow and i got in there and i'm like bang bang right i go in i come out and i leave it there and my buddy, who's funny, one of the funniest motherfuckers I know in the world, whose house it is, he comes out too because he goes in be- after me, and he just yells from inside. He goes, "Who the fuck goes to somebody's house and the first thing they do is shit and bring their own spray?" You know. And I'm like, I thought it was a nice touch. And then he comes out and he goes, "I have to admit, Peter, it is a nice touch. It smells nice, and it is." But he goes. Well, so I'm passing it on to the listeners, man. You, you know, it, yeah, the way you bring underarm deodorant or a toothbrush, if you're going to go to someone else's home for an overnight stay, bring your own uh, spray, toilet spray. It just, it, it just really saves you. Did, you. did you do that when you visited here? No, because I, I, I knew I wasn't going to be in oh, your house. Okay. Yeah, gotcha, separate, gotcha. separate, separate. I knew that. So, <laughs> so you left the thing in the bathroom for everybody to use? Yeah, because there was two other guys were all staying there, and quite frankly, you know, I mean, the first night Thursday, me and my buddy Larry, who you had at your house, we stayed at a hotel on the way out there, and you know, we were just drinking and we just wanted a room, so we got two double beds. That was the first time I slept in another room with another man. In roughly twenty years, wow, bro. yeah, it took about a hundred and eighty dollar bar tab to do it, <laughs> <laughs> but we did it. And then uh, they- the next day we're fishing. What you take on this? We're on the boat again. These are all these guys I grew up with, my best friends from growing up for sure. And and Larry goes, I'm like, what's wrong? Because I'm like, what are you, are you hung over? Because we were uh, partying the night before. I, and he goes, no, I'm uh, just feeling a little uncomfortable because Joey's wearing my flip flops right now, and it's kind of bothering me. Oh god! Oh my god! I look over, I'm like, oh my, oh god. my god! You're wearing another man's flip flops. Now my friend Joey's a jujitsu expert, you know, and all that martial arts. I mean, top level, so he's used to like a man's foot in his hand and all that shit. So he's just standing there looking at me going, are you fucking kidding me? You guys are pussies. You guys are... And I'm like, I, I don't know about that. I, I think I'd be less uncomfortable if you, if, you, if you had your underwear over his head to block the sun. <laughs> Holy. And, you know, this is, again, this is a boat. We're fishing on it. So there's the moisture in between the foot. And, it, you know, oh, oh, I mean, are those even oh. rewearable? <laughs> Oh, you gotta burn them. <laughs> you gotta burn them. The, the the, the flip flop to begin with, it's got that separator that's between the big toe and the second toe, right? That oh, little yeah. separator there is yeah. a it's, it's a petri dish for bacteria. <laughs> That is so gross, that separator. Because I wasn't even thinking of that. You ever slide your own finger in between a toe and take a whiff sometimes? <laughs> oh, my God. That'll wake the dead, that smell. And and now you're putting that in between your own toe on him? And we didn't even get into the soul. If a man wears a flip-flop for more than one week and you put another man's flip-flop on the dock, you could feel that your toes don't fit in the fucking nugget <laughs> holes of... <laughs> You can tell that this ain't my flip flop, uh, right? So, so you knowingly putting on another man's. F- oh God, I can't even say it out loud, bro. I'm trying to enjoy oh, my God. coffee. <laughs> well, did, he, did, did that guy not have his own flip flops? Is that why he was wearing them, or what? what did he forget it? What, yeah, God, no, he probably he, he, to be doing he, that. 
Uh, he's such a good dude. He partied with us the night before uh, and just was having such a good time. He's like, screw it. I'm going to call my wife, tell him fishing too. So we only had sneakers from the night before. And at one point he took them off and he was barefoot. And then we were catching flounder and shit and he needed some uh, footwear. So, yeah, that's how it went down. But, dude. And then uh, he's Italian too. And we're on this boat. And, bro, I got to tell you. At one point, all the other guys doing the spray. I look over at him. He looks at me. He's like, and he's dark, right? He's like, you spray? I go, nah, I don't spray. You spray? He goes, I, I go to Jones Beach three days a week. No spray. I go, you and the wife go? He goes, no. Nah. He's a retired cop. He goes, it's my thing. I go to Jones Beach for my, my beach chair. I like to sit in the sand for a couple hours. But again, it's, it's like Italians know not to use that shit. I know it's just it's yeah, it's 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 so innate in us that it's almost foreign that we would be doing that, you know, to to be spraying like you got that after spray, which I gotta tell you, I don't know what you're doing over there. This tan is almost baked into your skin. I mean, it it don't leave. No, it would have faded after Hill and Head, but then I was back out on the boat fishing, and it, yeah, so it just hasn't had a chance to fade. It's gonna fade soon, bro. It's fading. No, it looks it's already great. getting a little, little. Uh, are you wearing red pants, though, huh? <laughs> were you got? No, I'm not trying to be funny, but were you golfing? No, these are sweats. Oh, oh, it's sweats. sweats. Oh, oh, oh! I thought you yeah, were no, it's pants. Like, it's a uh, birthday gift. My buddy oh. gave me some uh, some pants. It's like uh, Muhammad Ali. Uh, I don't know. So yeah, listen, probably. I wanted to ask you, uh, Patrick, do we have that video of that guy, that um, rapper guy with, with the Chipotle? Did you see this video? Yeah. Diplo. He's a DJ, I think. And He's a DJ. I want to, like, set the set the thing straight on this uh, Diplo guy with the, with yeah. the card. Because I got a lot of messages in regards to I have a different card than he's got. For those of you who haven't seen it, this guy Diplo went into a Chipotle, used his Chipotle yeah. card, and bought everybody that came in to the Chipotle a meal. All right? right. So this is this is we're watching this video now. People would come up and they'd be shocked that the thing is free. <laughs> now, now, which is a really really great idea that he had, and I didn't know you could do this. But there is an option on the on the card once a year to throw a party for fifty people. All right, right. So what he what he did was he used that party option in store. Right, right. So we do have the same card. It's just he used it in a different way, and he must have called ahead of time to yeah. set this up. Because if you went in there and told the 18-year-old uh, senior in high school, here's the card, I want to buy 50 people, it, he would his head would have exploded. So they must have called corporate. This had to be set up way ahead of time because there's no way anybody would know how to, how to do this. Well, I mean, on one hand, if somebody comes in, if you're working, all of a sudden there's a line of 50 people. And you got to make 50 burritos. You got to make 50 burritos. So you no know, one's expecting you to have them all at once. And I think you missed a big opportunity here, bro. Because not to wrap it all back up, but it wraps up nice to the beginning of the show. You're at this half-trodden aquarium about to eat lox that's been sitting out for 90 minutes in the sun. All you had to do is turn to the guy who ran the party and go, "You want? let's just wrap everybody up, head of a Chipotle after a party right now. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> That's what you should save it for. Next bad party you're at, just go up to the power and go, you want to take it to Chipotle right now on me? <laughs> I, I got even one better. I just have Chipotle catered a damn thing. I mean, if, if the food is bad, I'll call Chipotle. I'll go get 50 burritos over here in 30 minutes. And, and I catered a party through Chipotle. <laughs> Saving the day, man. That would have been nice. That would have been nice. So, okay, yeah, that's good to know because it sure it seemed like that guy Diplo just could go into any Chipotle anytime he wanted and just buy yeah. everybody a burrito. No, it's a it's a one a once a year option. And I talked to Dude. Watt about it. He did it. He said it was a nightmare. He couldn't like he, you know, it, 
no one knew about the card. He didn't do that, but I guess he had like a party that he threw for maybe his you know, football, his teammates or whatever. Oh, right, and he right. said it was difficult to kind of get that done. But this had to be set up way ahead of time. There's no way anybody knew the computer code for 50 free burritos. <laughs> right, right. But I don't know. If I was working the burrito place, because this guy Diplo, I, I've seen videos. He's pretty huge, right, with that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like he draws these huge crowds. So like hypothetically, let's say you compare that to like a young Elton John or Rod Stewart, and I'm behind the counter, and Elton John comes in with those glasses in his 40s and says, this card allows me to get free burritos for everybody. Start making them. I, I think I just make them. And then I tell management later on, fucking Elton John came in and, and said we owe 50 burritos. He said he's the rocket man. Just start rolling burritos, right? So that's maybe what this chick did. She said fucking Diplo wants some food for everybody. Throw it out there, you know? <laughs> so, so you're saying if you're a huge music star, you could go into an establishment and go, listen, make 50 burritos for these people. I'll see you later. <laughs> And tell them they're on Mick Jagger. Thank you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well. man. Uh, all right, bro. I got a bolt. Uh, right. Great, great hanging. And, Always. Uh, uh, check out uh, the SebastianLive.com for some tour dates. I'm on tour the rest of the year, and then I'm not going on tour anymore for a while. So this wow. is the last time you're going to be able to, uh, to come out to a show. So check it out, SebastianLive.com. Pete is in the midst of becoming a actor, writer, producer, <laughs> and director. <laughs> no, I, I'm not directing. I'm, I'm hoping to maybe be on it, but I'm showrunning it. Yeah, cool. Yeah. But uh, well, I'm doing a few hope, shows, too. What, 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 where are you at? Where are you at? Well, the first one I just want to say, it, oh, no, actually, I'm going to say them all at once in a couple of weeks. Sorry, brother. Oh, okay. okay. Man. We'll wait on that. In the meantime, everybody stay safe, and we'll see you next week.